Hallelujah. I am going to be in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 today, so if you'd open up your sword there. Um, I'm going to go bounce around a little bit all throughout there, but uh, it's about our faith. That's the title of this message is Our Faith. You and I are living in a time right now where we have nothing left to stand on but our faith. Can you say amen to that? We have to know God's word enough by faith that when the hard times come, that we're going to be able to stand. And we're going to be able to stand through our faith. Our faith is going to help us to overcome. Amen? Amen. You've got to be able to, look, we've got to put away, church, we've got to grow, we've got to grow a little bit stronger. Right. Not just in our faith, but we've got, we got to start toughening up our skin a little bit. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm seeing and hearing way too many Christians, uh, they're just, they're being offended by this little thing or, or that little thing. You know, uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you as a pastor, I love each and every one of you, and I've said it before, I'm willing to, to die for you, um, but man, toughen up your skin a little bit. Right. Right. A- amen? Uh, because it, if you think it's hard now, you haven't seen anything yet. Right. Amen? amen? Right. You haven't seen a thing yet. It, it's, uh, we know that craziness is coming. Craziness is already here, right. right? But we know craziness is coming. God's word says that without faith it is impossible to please him, to please God the Father. So we must have faith. His word also teaches us that he has given to each of us a measure of faith. Can you say that with me? Say a measure of faith. Every one of us has been given that measure of faith. It depends on now what do we do with that faith. Right? I preached a sermon a while back. It's called Fertilize Your Faith. Right? We need to be able to fertilize our faith. Yes. If you want a good crop, if you want a good garden, you've got to fertilize your garden, right? Yes. You've got to dig up the fallow ground. You've got to dig that, that dirt up. You've got to turn it over. In other words, you've got to go to the root what's in your life, and you've got to dig it up. You've got to expose it. Yes. Too many of us, when my wife and I counsel people, especially in marriages, there's always a core. Say core. There's always a core that somebody has, C-O-R-E. And people run back to that core all the time. They constantly want to go back to their core because that keeps them where they're at. When you dig up that fallow ground, when you let go of your past, hallelujah, by faith, when you dig that up and you let go of your past, now God's going to move in your life. Because Satan keeps you at your core. He keeps you at a place where when something goes wrong to you, it's, it's like an alcoholic. When things are not going right in your, their life, they go back to drinking. When something isn't working out right, we go back to the bottle. Amen? Too many of us as Christians, we have a core. We go back to being a, a hateful person. We go back to being angry and bitter. We go back to beating people up. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. We've got to figure out that core and we've got, to, we've got to crush it. We've got to dig it up at the root and we've got to get rid of it. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. He's given each of us that measure. For he who comes to God must believe. Say must believe. Must believe. That he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Say diligently. What does that mean to you? I pray that it means that you are diligently, that you are going after, that you are chasing down. Right now, some of us might be watching the Olympics. You see these people, they've trained their entire lives. Their entire lives for 10 seconds. Amen. And they're given everything that they have in their physical being for that 10 seconds. Amen. They're they're going after that prize to put a, a necklace around their neck. They're diligently training. They're training their bodies. They're training their mind. Right? To get that, that thing around their neck. I wish that we were that hungry as Christians. That we were diligently seeking God's face on a daily basis. Instead of whenever I get a headache in the morning, I, I go and I get a couple of aspirin out of the cabinet. And rather, I, I should be going to the Lord in prayer first. Amen? I should be taking it to Him first and asking for His direction, for His guidance, for His healing. Believing and knowing by faith that he's going to heal me. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to become that person. Hebrews chapter 3. It reads like this. It says, By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Let me repeat that. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Amen? Hallelujah. God created everything. How many of you understand that? Right? So the, the trees that are outside, God created that. The water that's in the ocean and the ponds and the rivers, God created that. Amen. The blue of the sky, God created that. The moon and the stars and the sun, God created that. Hallelujah. We just believe that by faith. Right? I'm talking about faith. I'm not talking about trust. Trust is a little bit different. Trust is when you're driving down the road and the only thing keeping that truck from hitting you head on is that little double painted yellow line on the, on the road. You're trusting that that person is not going to come into your lane. Hello? Yeah. Right? We have to come to a complete surrender and a complete understanding of who God is in our life. Of what it is that God would have us to do by faith. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Everything, everything stems from our faith. Yeah. Whether you're going to have a good day or you're going to have a bad day, it comes from faith. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah? Every situation that arises in your life, you've got a choice to make. Yeah. Don't you? No matter what that situation is in your life, you have a choice to make by faith. Sometimes we have to step out on faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen, right? 11.1. So we, we're not seeing it, but we're trusting in God the Father that it's going to come to pass. Just like when we sent down a prayer request today for the little child. By faith, we believed that child was going to be saved. Yes. Yes. That there was going to be no harm done. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the word of God, Yah, all things were formed. And we believe by faith. All things. Say all things. all things. Man will tell you that they are the creator. Man will tell you that they have done this or they have done that. They have done nothing. Amen. God has given you and I wisdom to do things. Hello? He's given you and I the strength to do things. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. Do you agree to that? If, you're, if it is a desire of your heart for, for something, if you're truly sold out to God and seeking Him diligently, He's going to bring it to pass for you. But if we leave this place and we go home and we're a completely different person at home than what we are when we walk through the church doors, there's a problem. You've not completely surrendered to the Father. Hello? Amen. Oh, I'm hitting somebody's button today. Right. Huh? Amen. I see people looking around, checking out the ceiling fans, right? You've got to talk to God every day. Yes. Now is the time to get close. Yes. Now is the time to know His heartbeat. Yes. Now is the time to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's right. Hello? Yes. Now is the time. It's by our faith. It's by our faith, church, that we move forward. Abel offered a more pleasing sacrifice than his brother Cain. And he obtained righteousness. He obtained righteousness. Right? You have to understand the story, don't we? Of Cain and Abel. If you read in the scriptures and you get the understanding, right? It talks about, right? By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain. Yes. How does one get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. So if you believe that, then we're, we know that everything is, is through God. Yes. And we know that everything is through Yah, Yahweh. Hello? Yes. And that everything that comes to pass has to go through him first. Yes. Amen? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 4, you don't have to turn there, but you can. 4, 6. God is speaking directly to Cain. And he's asking him, why has his countenance fallen? Why do you look downtrodden? Why do you look depressed? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do well, it says, that sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. You have authority over the enemy. Yes. Take 
your authority, church. Church, we need to be able to stand up against the wiles of the enemy, against the fiery darts of the enemy. You're only going to be able to do that if you have faith. You're only going to be able to do that if you put on the full armor of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You're only going to be able to do that if you know enough of God's word to get you through. Amen. Don't rely on someone else to pull you through. That may work for a little while, but it's not going to sustain you. But he obtained righteousness because he listened. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that God the Father spoke to Cain. I just told you where. Genesis 4, 6. Amen. So they know enough. Abel offered a blood sacrifice of the best of his flock to the Father. Amen. A pleasing sacrifice. Cain offered the fruit of the ground. Amen. If you read the chapter before, it says that God cursed the ground because of what the enemy did. The serpent had done. So Cain just offered something to God the Father or something that God just cursed. Hello? Amen. Hello? Are, are we still there? Amen. Look at the person sitting next to you. Say, are you awake? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. That woke you up if it didn't. Amen. Now we got to understand Noah. Noah was divinely warned, saying divinely warned. What does that mean? We have to come to that understanding of being divinely warned. The Holy Spirit in our lives divinely warns a lot of us. Yes. It's determined whether or not we're going to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And give Him what His due is. To be obedient. God wants us to be obedient more than anything else. Just be obedient. Yes. And everything will go okay. Yes. The hard part is we want things our way. In our time. The way we want it. Amen? Yes. So whenever we steer from that, whenever we walk away from that, we're, do, we're pushing God away. God says, just do it this way. Just plant your garden this way. And I promise you, it will give you the most fruit you've ever had. But no, we want to do it the way Grandma always taught us. <laughs> huh? Right? Right? The hot pepper seeds go next to the, the green peppers, and, right? And all that. It's got to be this way. So when we slow down and we listen to what God's voice tells us to do, we will get a better crop. When we listen by faith and we walk out and we start to sow seed among people, which is what we are all supposed to be doing, when we start to sow seed, we're going to reap a harvest. Hello? But it's for the kingdom. It's not for me. It's for him. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And it's by what? Our faith. Yes. Noah, being divinely warned, had not seen rain, was told to build a boat in the middle of the desert. Yes. We've talked about this. Amen. And I am sure he was bullied. I'm sure people said, you're nuts. What on earth are you doing? You're building the boat for what? Because there's a flood coming. It hasn't rained here in a hundred and some years. And all of a sudden you're telling me that the earth's going to be flooded. Yep, that's what I'm telling you. And I'm building a boat. Hallelujah. Because God said so. How many of us would walk out on that kind of faith today? I pray that all of us would. But I don't know that all of us would. Right? Because it sounds a little crazy. It sounds a little off. It's kind of like where we're living today, doesn't it? Yes. A lot of things are occurring today that we're sitting there going, what is wrong with these people? They're a little off. Amen. They're going to spin it that you and I are the ones that are a little bit off. Stand on your faith. Stand on what you know to be truth. Amen? Yes. You've got to have enough faith that's going to see you through until you stand before the Lord. Yes. Amen? Until you leave this world. He moved with a godly kind of fear. In other words, he was desperate. He was running his race to get this ark built. To have it prepared in time. He had a godly fear. He was worried. He believed. Yes. Say he believed. He believed. By, faith. by faith. Amen? Amen? He believed by faith. I'm here to 
to tell you today that if you do not have faith, you're not going to see the other side. You're going to struggle. Life is going to get harder. And you're going to ask why. And you're constantly going to be calling the pastor and asking why. I'm going to tell you to open up your book and read it. Hello? Amen. Amen. Start reading. Once you have an understanding, you believe of what you just read, now study it. Yes. Don't just read it. Study God's Word. Amen. Then he became the heir of the righteousness according to faith. Still speaking of Noah. Let me reread that. He became the heir, H-E-I-R, of righteousness according to faith. He became the heir. How awesome is that? Because he was righteous. Because by faith he heard God, listened to God, and was obedient to God. And then he walked it out. He began to build an ark. He began to build a boat according to what the specs that God gave him. He heard it. He believed it. You and I have got to get to a place. What kind of faith are we supposed to have? Childlike. Right? When you tell any of your children anything, they believe it. Right? They believe it. By faith, we are to do the same thing. If it lines up with God's word. Yes. Amen. It's got to line up with the word of God. So by faith, we are to walk it out. Yes. Faith is an action. Yes. Faith means you're going to do something. Yes. Because you believe. Yes. Those of us that got baptized last, a week ago, right? We should be, we should be on fire. Yes. Yes. We should be so focused right now that nothing is going to hinder us. We should be walking forward with God to the next level He wants to take each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's where we have to get ourselves to. Praise God. Abraham just started walking when he was told that he would receive an inheritance. Yes. He told him that he was going to have a promised land and he was going to have this inheritance and he just started going. By faith. He believed God. And it was counted righteous to him. Do you want righteousness to be accounted to you and to your life? Start walking when God tells you to. Listen, there's a lot of you that are in this room, and I know, I know your life. We talk a lot. There's times when God or the Holy Spirit is going to put something in your spirit. And He's going to tell you to call someone, or to talk to someone, or to say something to someone. Don't question it. Do it. Do it. But it's uncomfortable. I know it is. Nothing great ever happened from mediocrity. Amen? If you want to win the battle, you have to have been in a war. Uh, hello? There's things that you're going to go through. Listen, you're going to hear a lot of naysayers about everything. About this church. About how we teach and what we teach and what we preach. You're going to hear naysayers. You've got a choice to make. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt we're on the right path. Amen. There's no doubt in my mind. Amen. Amen. We are headed in the right direction. We are yes. preaching and teaching the right stuff. Yes. We are into the meat of the Word of God. Yes. Some of us need to catch up. Some of you need to just hang on. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. And that's okay. But come to the events that we do have. Sunday school, 9.15 a.m. Wednesday night services, 6 p.m. Yes. We get into the meat of the word. Yes. Amen? Amen? We talk about the events on Wednesday nights that are happening in our world right now. And where is that at found in this word? Right. Yes. Right. What's going on in the world and where is it at in the Bible? Yes. Amen? Yes. We have to be aware. Yes. And we got to believe it by faith. And we got to move just like Noah did with a godly kind of fear. Amen? Hebrews... 11.13 These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. Amen? They died in their faith. They still believed. Even though these things were coming to pass, that God showed them and God said that this is what was going to be, be done for them. Right? Abraham, your seed shall be like the, the sand of the seashores. Innumerable. He didn't see that. But look at us. Look at the world. Amen? 
There's people, it's full of breeders. <laughs> that was a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> Amen? We've figured that part out, haven't we? As the sands of the seashore. But by faith, he believed and he walked it out. You and I got to have that same belief. We got to be sold out for God. Now more than ever, church. Let go, let God. Let go of the problems that are in your life. Let God have them. Don't go pick them back up again. When you bring them to the altar and you want to pray at the altar and have somebody pray with you, we'll certainly do that. But don't, next week, don't come back with the exact same prayer. Because all you're doing is picking it back up. You've not truly given it to God. Let go of it. Let God have it. Having a problem with your children? Give them to God. Amen. Give them to God. Say, God, this is your child. You fix him or her. Amen. And then wash your hands. Uh, don't go pick that baby back up again until that baby walks back in your house. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh, geez. Did he just go there? Yep, I went there. Amen. Having seen them afar off, by faith they could see. By faith they believed God's word. By faith they knew that what God was saying was going to come to pass. Hallelujah. They could see it by faith. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. We need to confess the same exact thing. Yes. This is not our home. <laughs> you didn't get that. This is not our home. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. For where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. I don't know about you, but he's been preparing a place for us for over 2,000 years. I bet it's awesome. Uh, amen. Amen. Come on. He knows exactly what you like as far as a house. He knows exactly what it, how you want your bathroom to look. Amen. He knows. And it's going to be awesome. Amen. There's going to be no more sickness. No more pain. We're going to be new bodies. I need one. Yes. Hello? Anybody else need a new body? Yes. Huh? Hello? No more sickness. No more pain. No more worry. No more fear. I see too many Christians today, we're in fear. Listen, God did not give you a spirit of fear. Amen? Amen? That is His word. But of sound mind and sound body. Because He lives in you. Say amen. Say, he lives, in me. he lives in me. Amen. I pray you believe that. Moses, think about Moses. Think about what Moses did. He gave up being the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Second in command of all of Egypt. He gave it up to become a slave. Yes. Because he found out of his Hebrew roots. How many of you would be willing to do that? Oh boy. Huh? You've got marble floors. You've got anything and everything you could possibly want. You've got the biggest mansion in the land. You tell somebody to do something and 50 people go running trying to beat the other one to get it done for you. He could have anything that he wanted. And he gave it all up. To be obedient to the Father. To become a slave. To go down into the pits and to work as a slave. To be whipped. To be beaten. God still used him. Even though he got into an argument and a fight and he murdered a man. God still used him. Pastor, are you saying that God will forgive a murderer? Yes, I am. And he will use you. Amen. But are you fully repenting? Doesn't mean you won't go to jail. But he will forgive you. Amen? Amen? Look at the person sitting next to you and say, He'll forgive you of whatever you have done. Amen? Look at verse 25 and 26 of that same chapter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be looking toward the reward. We need to be looking for what it is that the Father is going to give us in heaven and in glory, not what we can gain on this earth. This earth has nothing for you or I. Nothing. Yes, you might have a Cadillac. You might drive around in a nice car. You might have a nice house. It is absolutely nothing compared to what God has in store for you. Absolutely nothing. A lot of people chase after money, wealth, gold. In heaven, God uses gold for pavement. Hello? Hello? You've got to understand, there's a difference. We've got it all mixed up. We need to surrender to His will, not our own. Every day. Say every day. Every day. Hallelujah. It's by our faith. It is by our faith. He looked to the reward. Verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, say endured, endured. as seeing him who is invisible. Say invisible. invisible. As seeing him who is invisible. Again, that is by faith. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. The king was going to come down upon him. Pharaoh was going to come down upon him because of what he had done. Pharaoh entrusted everything unto him. And he walked away from it, not fearing Pharaoh, not fearing the king. Because he knew that he knew that he knew that he heard God. He knew that he, what he was supposed to do. He had all the riches, all the glory he could possibly want. He was willing to give it up. Amen? Amen. Look at Stephen and Paul who suffered, who were beaten for their faith. The disciples who died for their faith. That the just shall live by faith alone. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I want to read something to you in Hebrews 10, 26 through 31. It says, get this. Just, just listen. You don't have to turn it. Just, just listen. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, we are no, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be taught worthy, thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace for we know him who said vengeance is mine I will repay says the Lord and again the Lord will judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God I pray that that wakes you up if nothing else will hallelujah for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for that sin or for the sins. We are to repent before the Father. We are come to come to the Father and we are to ask for that forgiveness. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter what it is that you have done, God will forgive you. Hallelujah. He will forgive you, but you have to repent from the heart. Our salvation is made through our confession. You've got to confess it to the Father. Silly me, I used to say, well, he already knows. So why do I have to confess it to him? It's called being obedient. Yes. It's called walking out in his truth, not mine. Yes. He already knows what you have done, yes, but he wants you to confess it. Right. It's showing a sign of surrender. Yes. Amen? Let's stand.